Right, here we go again. Um, as I was saying, we've had a look at a command. Uh, believe it or not, every single aspect of Maya, well, let's say 98% of Maya is actually mal controlled. Uh, so everything from bringing up a window, it's actually a script, div uh, script driven application. Um, I'm using 2008 extension 2 here. Um, just a quick little background on myself. I've been in 3D graphics for way too long now. Uh, I probably about 12, 13 years uh, working in games and broadcast and even teaching um, at private schools like Escape and things like that. And just recently I a company called T2, which is just started up in the UK. Um, but I prefer working in games because it's uh, it changes all the time and that suits me when I haven't been drinking. And I apologize for my tone or if I come across a bit like I don't really care. Normally I do, but like I say, I'm just not very well today. Um, right, so Mel, let's get this window back up. What's really important to, uh, to understand about Mel um, is you can know Mel and absolutely do sod all with it unless you know Maya. Now this isn't to show you Maya and I'm not I'm not on about Maya in a sense whereby we know which buttons to click. I'm on about knowing Maya in a sense where it's a it's a 50% a data flow node based system and knowing the capability of those nodes and how data flows then you can do a lot in Mel. What you can do in Mel without really advanced knowledge of Maya is automate tasks like I said. And something that I uh, I uh, just going to look at now is uh, like I say, creating like or grabbing a lot of objects and then just randomly spacing them out or something. But there's a few uh, there's a few things that we've got to cover first, like data. What is data? And I'm just going to collapse the input uh, the history window. Well, we've got certain types of data that we can store. And we need to store them in uh, in things called variables, which are little containers. Now, really quickly, um, a variable is a named container. We can think of it like a a chest, of, uh, well, just like a drawer or a cupboard. Except we name the cupboard. So if I was going to store the color red in in my cupboard, I would call my cupboard color. Um, what's the purpose of this? It'll become clear later on, but you'll just have to bear with me. It's so that we can recall data and use it, or we can populate mass amounts of data, recall it and use it without really statically putting it in there ourselves. So for instance, I don't have to say move cube 1, then move cube 2, then move cube 3. I can just say move all the cubes in my cupboard, which is, you know, the end result, which would be really weird. But we've got to understand what data is first, or what types of data there are. There's three types that... Um, we'll possibly look at in this. In fact, wait a minute, let me think. No, nope, there's only two, but we'll look at three in this anyway. We've got, oops. Yeah, I drink coffee, you take tea, my dear. I always type sting when I actually mean string, by the way, so there's probably going to be syntax errors popping up everywhere in this. Um, int, and we'll have a look at float. Just random words, but Well, sorry, I'll just go through them. String. A string is actually any letters, so it can be that. It can actually be numbers as well. Uh, and it could be a few symbols. Uh, what symbols are allowed? So it could be that. Um, they can't be numerically processed. So it's not like I can uh, take a string and times it by the number 2, because that obviously won't work. An integer, however, that's a whole number. So these are examples of integers, or even minus figures. And a float is a fractional number, which can store whole numbers, but it will be represented to us with a decimal point. But it means I can do things like this, or say minus 0 point blah blah, whatever. So these are integers. Uh, these are integers. These are floats. These are strings. This is what we can store in them. Now, just really quickly, a string. 
Well, let's have a look in Maya of what, what I can immediately see that is a string. I can see that these node names are actually strings because they're names. Uh, I can see that all my shelf tabs are strings. All the menu items here and names are actually strings. Um, integers. Well, let's have a look at what's an integer. Actually, believe it or not, visibility is an integer and it's got two values, 0 or 1, but they're represented as on or off, but I can just as easily put 0 in here and my cube will disappear, or 1. Um, I can't put 1 point, well actually I can, 1.2 <clears throat> Oh, no I can't, there we go. Again, disgraceful that I've used Maya for so long and I didn't know that. Um, <coughs> okay, and a float, well we've got floats here translation, rotation, scale, they're all floats because I can actually enter one point blah blah blah. Um, so there's lots of examples of strings and floats in Maya. Time at the moment is actually a fractional number although we can only move to absolute numbers I can actually, it does give me a dec decimal point which means I could actually go to 21.5 which then sends my uh, thought train quite off, so I won't do that. Um, so that's uh, that's basically uh, data and uh, data used in Maya. So next we'll get on to actually uh, creating a little script or something.